Hello, bass players. This is the tutorial video for marking period one, week seven. This is the week you get to choose your song. You're gonna choose between exercise number 36, dreidel, 41, which is jingle bells, 42, which is uh, Old MacDonald, or number 43, which is Mozart Melody, or Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, or the alphabet song, depending which one you um, know. Before I start and do some examples here for you and give you a little uh, clue as to what to watch out for, um, I want to address a few things that I've noticed in all of my bass players across my different classes. So first off is your instrument position. I've seen several of you trying to hold the instrument in front of you like this, with the back of it flat against you like this. This is not correct. The top right shoulder, this top right bout, is supposed to come in right above the top of your left leg and you'll see that the instrument is off to my left a little bit but um and angled towards my right that allows me to actually place the bow more easily if the bow if the base is turned this way you have to reach all the way over like this so if you're in this position and it feels really uncomfortable that's probably why another thing is your left hand position up here so we talked a lot about this, um, but the thumb should be flat against the back of the neck and those fingers on the front should be curved nice and high and spread out enough that the distance between one and two is the same as between two and four. You'll see that my fingers are right on those lines. As we play, be mindful. Gravity tends to take over and your hands tend to slide down this way. So every once in a while, just double check that your arm um, and your hand are in the same position. One other really big thing that I've noticed is that several of you are allowing your, um, the back of your arm to do this and hang down like this. This is not correct. You can see how this is all angled now and then my fingers are all bent funny. Um, if you just keep your arm, your elbow up a little bit higher, you'll notice that it allows your wrist to be straight. It's actually gonna make this a lot stronger and easier to hold the strings down. All right, so here's your first option. The first song is Dreidel. It's number 36 on page 13. A couple things to just be cautious of. Um, the rests and there's some string crossings that can make this a little challenging with the bow. Do your best. Uh, again, you can go whatever speed you need to go in order to play correctly, as long as it's the same speed from beginning to end. All right, so here's Dreidel Pizzicato. Starting on the open D string, all of the notes we play are gonna be on the D and the A string. Here it is, starting on D. Rest. Rest, rest, rest. Rest, rest, rest. Again, be careful of those string crossings. Um, when you play the AF, AF, it actually, you can hold both things down. I have my first finger down right here. Um, you can see I have my first finger down on the note A and I have my fourth finger down on F at the same time. And if you do that, then you don't have to uh, pick up and set down your fingers. If you can keep, keep them high enough and curved, having your thumb placed correctly behind is gonna make that a little easier because you'll be a little bit stronger. All right, here's dreidel with the bow, starting on open D. A couple things again about the bow. Um, I have noticed that some of you are allowing the tip of the bow to drift down this way. I know it feels a little weird, but if you ever feel this part of the bow touching the back of your hand, it's not correct. If you can practice in front of a mirror, you're gonna see this too. And you can see how my bow is not straight across the strings. Once I bring this to perpendicular, you see how I have a right angle here between my first finger and the stick of the bow. It's going to help me to keep that bow tip up and stop it from falling down. Again, gravity will be working against you. And if your base is at the right height, you should have the first line where your uh, first finger goes just around eye level. And if your arm just comes straight down, it should be just near the end of the fingerboard. And this is the correct placement for the bow. Again, as we draw the bow across, you'll see that I'm not bending my elbow, I'm just swinging from the shoulder in order to keep the bow in a perfectly straight line across. My fingers down here are acting sort of like a shelf, 
My index finger is supporting it, but I don't have my hand hooked around the bow. I'm just using that as a shelf. All right, so here is dreidel with the bow. going on your next option is number 41 which is jingle bells um one of the things when you're practicing to keep in mind is to always look for patterns so um if you remember when we discussed this one in class the first line and the third line are exactly the same so once you've mastered the first line you've actually learned about half the song the second and the fourth lines are very very similar the first two measures of each of those lines are identical but the ending is a little bit different and i'll go over that in a moment uh, when you're playing lines two and four, be very careful that you play enough G's at the beginning. There are five of them. One, two, three, four, then one more before it moves down. And same thing here. So make sure you play enough of each note. It's exactly what's written there. All right, so here's Jingle Bell's pizzicato, starting with our fourth finger on F sharp on the D string. One, two, here we go. I'm sorry, I played that incorrectly because I was reading violin music. I'm going to do it again. To the second line. Rest, rest. Same as the first line. the last line. And when I'm done, I'm just double checking. My hand is still in that same position. My pinky is on uh, that second tape. My index finger is on the first and my thumb is still here, flat on the back of the neck behind. My elbow is still high and my wrist is straight. All right, now we try it with the bow. Notice it's perpendicular to the strings. To the second line. two measures is a little bit tricky because we skip the note F sharp. So you're going to play A, A, G, E, D. That's one, one, open G, fourth finger is getting skipped. So we go to one for E and then open D. One, one, open, one, open. Try that a few times uh, to make sure that that's really comfortable because you don't want to get to the end of the song and make a silly mistake because you didn't practice the end. All right, going on, Old MacDonald. This one's pretty easy, a lot of repetition. You just have to make sure that you count correctly and don't forget to repeat the first line. We repeat without any stopping there. I'll try to make that obvious as I play. Here it is, pizzicato. One, two, here we go. the first line on the line
line two. do it with the bow. So again, just be cautious that you do the repeat without any stopping um, from the first line back to the first. Also, if you pay attention for the pattern, the first line and the third line are basically the same. The only difference is that last line doesn't have that extra D on the end. Here's Old MacDonald with the bow. Two, ready, and... <laughs> second line. Make sure that bow is straight, not dipping down. To the last line. Make sure you're stopping for those rests. And we go on to our last one, which is number 43, called Mozart Melody, otherwise known as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, or the Alphabet Song. One more time, just to pay attention to the patterns here, the first line and the last line are identical. So once you've learned that first line, you've really mastered two thirds of the song. The second line is also really easy. You'll notice that the first two measures are the same as the second two measures. So um, when you break it down into those smaller pieces, it's going to make it a little bit easier to put it all together. All right, so I'm going to do this twice, first pizzicato and then with the bow. Mozart melody, this is the bass part from the beginning, pizzicato. One, two, here we go. the first now we do it with the bow again think about that bow grip is your finger perpendicular here are your uh, fingers all the way over the bow not holding it the tips of my fingers like this get that bow grip all the way down set the bow on the D string Again, notice that it is perpendicular to the strings. And I'm just using this sort of pendulum motion back and forth to get that bow to go perpendicular to the strings in a nice long bow stroke. Here's Mozart Melody with the bow. Again, double check at the end that your hand stayed in that correct position, that your thumb is placed behind the second finger. And there's one other thing that I forgot about instrument position. If you're using a stool and you're sitting down, I just want to remind you, your right leg should be on the ground. Your foot should be on the ground, but your left leg is up on the stool like this because the, this part of your leg is going to support the back of the base like this. You scoot it a little further away from you than when you're standing. And now you can see I don't need to use any hands to hold the instrument. It makes it a little bit easier. It's a little bit easier to play because I'm not having to hold the instrument up. Again, your choices are number 36, 41, 42, or 43. You're going to be graded on exactly five things, that you play the correct notes, the correct rhythms, that you have a steady tempo, you don't speed up or slow down, 
that you are using the bow correctly, including its placement and how you're holding the bow. And finally, that you have good instrument position and posture. You will notice I did not say speed. If you need to play it slowly, that is absolutely fine, as long as you go the same amount of slow from beginning to end. If you have any questions, comments, or other thoughts, this is my first time making one of these videos as a tutorial. So if there's something I didn't do that you would like to see in future videos, please make sure that you comment below. And I cannot wait to hear how you do with this. So get off and go practice. I'll see you later.